starting with this chapter today that is electrochemistry see this chapter of electrochemistry is also connected the basic fundamentals of electrochemistry is from the chapter of redox reaction from your 11th standard is this point clear the point here is this this chapter has a weightage of nearly 3 to 4 questions combined with redox reaction in any entrance examination so that is why it is very very important is this clear so let's get on with straight with the topic that is electrochemistry so electrochemistry means it has basically got to do something with electrical energy it has got something to do with electrical energy and chemical energy electrical energy and chemical energy so there are two possibilities one possibility is electrical energy is converted to chemical energy electrical energy is converted to chemical energy so when electrical energy is converted to chemical energy this process is called as electrolysis so what is the first point that we have to know in electrolysis electrolysis is non spontaneous remember thermodynamics i told you free energy has to be negative for reaction to happen on its own the reaction which happen on its own we call as spontaneous so electrolysis is first of all so that is the first entrance exam question we are tackling it is non spontaneous so it is non spontaneous you need the external current to cause electrolysis okay not current electricity we require the ex external electricity to cause now the cell the apparatus or the machine is this clear this is called as electrolytic cell it is called as electrolytic cell if it is electrolysis of water if it is electrolysis of if it is electrolysis of water then this apparatus is called as voltmeter why i am saying is because sometimes in some numerical they may say that electrolysis of a liquid in a voltmeter cause so much of hydrogen to form so much of oxygen to form you say what was a liquid you should know since it is water it is called as voltmeter then what do we have we have chemical energy so if you are converting chemical energy into electrical energy if you are converting chemical energy into electrical energy okay what happens in this case electrical and chemical energy to electrical energy this first of all this reaction is spontaneous it is spontaneous it happens on its own the apparatus the machine or the equipment is called as electrochemical cell it is also called as electrochemical cell okay sometimes it is also called as or it is called as voltaic cell why is it called as voltaic cell because volta was a scientist what did he do he simply took zinc plates kept one and in between the two zinc plate he put sodium chloride salt solution and then when he connected he realized that the bulb glowed so it was one of the experiment where chemical energy was getting converted into electrical energy is this point clear or it is also called as galvanic cell or it is also sometimes called as 
primary cell. So all mean the same. Is this point clear? Now this was introduction of electrochemistry. So one very important thing is irrespective of the fact whether it is electrolysis or electrochemical cell being formed. One thing common about both of them for electrolysis as well as electrochemical cell what we have is we have electrodes. So common to both common to both electrolytic and electrolytic and electrochemical cell common to both that is electrolytic and electrochemical cell is an electrode So how do you define an electrode? To start with, to begin with, we define electrode as a metal in contact with its own ions. Then later on we are going to have a big discussion on types of electrode based on composition, based on function, so on and so forth. To begin with, very elementary definition we are giving, what is an electrode? So what is an electrode? We simply say it is a metal, it is a metal in contact, it is a metal in contact with its own ions. That means if I take a zinc rod and dip it in zinc sulphate, so zinc element is in contact with zinc ion. So that will be an electrode. In the same lines I can have copper sulphate in con sorry copper metal in contact with copper sulphate. I can have silver in contact with silver nitrate. So on and so forth. Basically. You can have any example. Now in any electrochemical cell or electrolytic cell one thing is very clear. And what is that? That there are two types of electrode. What are the two types of electrode? One is a cathode and the other is anode. We have a cathode and an anode. Is this point clear? So we should never say cathode is negative, anode is positive or cathode is negative, anode is positive. That would be a wrong logic because in case of electrolysis, cathode is negative, anode is positive. But in case of electrochemical cell, anode is negative and cathode is positive. Listen carefully, cathode and anode. So when we talk of cathode, what happens is, cathode is, so we talk in terms of the reaction that is taking place. Is this clear? So cathode is an electrode. It is an electrode. Cathode is an electrode where reduction takes place, where reduction takes place. Whereas anode is an electrode, it is an electrode where oxidation takes place. where oxidation takes place is clear so now this is where the concept of redox reaction comes in is clear so what is reduction all these are definitions one one mark in the examination remember that so we talk of reduction what is reduction reduction is defined as gain of electron reduction is defined as gain of electron by any species And what is oxidation?
oxidation is defined as loss of electron loss of electron by any species is this clear so anything which undergoes oxidation reduction will be a good oxidizing agent any sp species which undergoes oxidation will be a good reducing agent will be a good reducing agent is this point clear now what happens is we have to first talk about electrolysis and then we'll go to an electrochemical cell so in electrolysis we are looking at some electric electrolytic reactions is this clear now what are they give me a minute huh? i'll just close this down because talking about electrolysis so first we are looking at what is the product of electrolysis in certain cases when we do electrolysis of certain salts either in their aqueous solution or in their fused state it is clear because that's the question which they ask in the entrance exam that what is the product of electrolysis So let us start with simple. So examples of electrolysis. Examples of electrolysis. So when you talk of examples of electrolysis, first question is. product of electrolysis of fused nawh this is easy nacl sorry product of uh, electrolysis of of fused sodium chloride fused sodium chloride so what happens to fused sodium chloride nacl forms na plus plus cl minus nacl forms na plus plus cl minus so you have two electrodes at the cathode and then you have anode cathode what is going to happen reduction anode oxidation okay so which is the species cations get discharged at cathode so sodium ion gains an electron and forms sodium metal whereas chloride ion undergoes oxidation to form half cl2 plus an electron so the product of electrolysis here is sodium at cathode and chlorine at anode this is the first example let us just change it a little bit and now come to product of electrolysis of product of electrolysis of aqueous nacl so from fused we are coming to what aqueous nacl is this this all the question is asked so in aqueous nacl what happens nacl dissociates to form na plus plus cl minus and what do you have you have water what also dissociates to form h plus and what oh minus h plus and oh minus so now here is which will get now you have two different cations and two different anions so which will get preferentially discharged is clear so in this case what happens is H plus ion. I'll give you the series if you want. Is this clear? That becomes easy. See, 
we have space here. Na? When you talk of discharge of cations, this is clear. Silver plus will be more easily uh, discharged as compared to copper, as compared to hydrogen, as compared to uh, Fe, not very important, as compared to aluminium. I am just taking some examples which are important. As compared to sodium, as compared to potassium. So, this simple series I have given you. So, can you see the comparison over here? So, when you have sodium and H plus ion, okay, which will get preferentially discharged. So, at the cathode, which will get cathode means reduction. What will happen? R stands for reduction. What's going to happen? 2H plus plus 2 electron forms H2 gas. Once again at the anode, now you have a problem. Oxidation. So for the anions, what is the series that we have? Now here we have, you have two anions, chloride and hydroxyl. You have chloride and hydroxyl. So when you look at the um, series, you will find that you will have um, OH minus greater than uh, iodide greater than uh, what do you call uh, Br minus greater than Cl minus greater than NO3 greater than sulphate greater than fluoride. So here between OH and chloride, I think it should be ultra. It will be halide greater than OH greater than nitrate. It will be like this. It will be halide. Yeah. It will be halide. That is iodide greater than bromide greater than uh, chloride greater than OH minus greater than nitrate greater than sulphate. Okay. This is the correct logic. So here what happens between OH minus and Cl minus, chloride has a higher discharge potential as compared to OH minus ion. So at the anode what is going to happen? You will have 2 Cl minus form Cl2 plus 2 electron. So solution in the, the solution left behind is NaOH. So this is the method of preparation of sodium hydroxide that is electrolysis of aqueous NaCl or brine. It is clear. Aqueous NaCl strong one is also called as brine. This is called as Kastner's process. Is this point clear? So the production of sodium by this method is called as um, Dawn process, I just don't remember. Then now we come toward the third one. Let us look at copper. Electrolysis of of aqueous copper sulphate. What happens in case of, these are all uh, MCQs which have been asked, which I am actually solving. Electrolysis of aqueous copper sulphate, what is going to happen? When you talk of aqueous copper sulphate, you have CuSO4 dissociate to form Cu plus 2 plus SO4 minus 2. You also have H2O forms what? Uh, H plus plus OH minus. So between copper and hydrogen, which will have a higher chance of discharging at the cathode? Copper. Just now I told you. We are following this. So in this case, what happens? Cathode reduction, copper plus 2 plus 2 electron forms copper metal. At the anode, now you look what happens. At the anode, at the anode, what will happen? You have OH minus and sulphate. So OH has a higher, what do you call, chance of discharge. So 2 OH minus forms H2O plus O2 plus 
two electrode. So what is the solution left behind? These are questions which they are solution left behind is sulfuric acid is sulfuric acid. Now let me come to the third. Now we have done copper sulfate. So let us do electrolysis of electrolysis of CuCl2 copper chloride electrolysis of copper or cupric chloride CuCl2 is Cu plus 1 is cuprous and Cu plus 2 is cupric so this is cupric chloride of aqueous huh? so what is going to happen CuCl2 is going to form Cu plus 2 plus 2 Cl minus correct and then H2O is going to form what? H plus plus OH minus. So at the cathode, at the cathode between hydrogen and copper, look at this. Between hydrogen and copper, copper has a greater chance for reduction when, it, when both are present. So you have Cu plus 2 plus 2 electron form Cu. At the anode, now look, situation has changed. You have hydroxyl and chloride, so which will get discharged first, it's a chloride ion, so 2Cl minus forms Cl2 plus 2 electron. So what is left behind? H and OH minus, so solution left behind is water. Solution left behind is water. Then we come to what last? Electrolysis of electron, let us say lead nitrate, PbNO3 hold twice. Electrolysis of lead nitrate. Is this clear? Where does lead stand over here? So you have silver, copper, hydrogen and then lead also over here. This is clear. So, that is Pb plus 3, not Pb plus 2. So, now what happens is lead nitrate may listen. You have PbNO3 hole twice forms Pb plus 2 plus NO3 minus. You have H2O and forms H plus plus OH minus. It is clear. So here what happens is lead will be, lead will have less what you call um, chance of decompose as compared to hydrogen. So in this case what happens at the cathode, at the cathode what is going to happen? 2H plus, interesting case, huh? 2H plus plus 2 electron forms H2. At the anode, you have OH minus and nitrate. Is this clear? So what is going to happen? OH minus has a greater chance than nitrate. So it will be um, 2 OH minus forms what? H2O plus half O2 plus 2 electron. So in lead nitrate, it's water which is going to get electrolyzed. Is this point clear? Then we come to what is one more example that is sulfuric acid. We come to sulfuric acid. This we require for electrochemistry. May we have this um, lead accumulator. What happens when you charge beyond a certain uh, specific gravity? So sulfuric acid aqueous forms 2H plus plus SO4 minus 2. Water forms H plus plus OH minus. So at the cathode there is no problem. Why? There is only one cation. So 2H plus plus 2 electron forms H2 gas. So hydrogen at cathode. At the anode you have OH minus and sulfate. So which will have greater power? 
OH minus. So what is going to happen? 2 OH minus forms H2O plus half O2 plus 2 electron. So product of electrolysis is hydrogen at cathode and oxygen at anode. So these are the questions which have been put as MCQ. What is the product of electrolysis? What is the solution remaining behind? So on and so forth. It is clear. So this was what you call about electrolysis. Now we come to Faraday's first law of electrolysis. From the observation and the result of the experiment what happened? Whatever he got, he proposed his law. So what did he say? So we have Faraday's first law of electrolysis. So according to the Faraday's first law of electrolysis, it says that the amount of substance deposited liberated during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of charge or electricity supplied. I'll tell you what mistake which people make. So we say, the law says, the amount of substance, the amount of substance deposited liberated or dissolved or dissolved at any electrode at any electrode during electrolysis at any electrode during electrolysis is directly proportional is directly proportional to the quantity of charge quantity of charge or electricity quantity of charge or electricity supplied see here essentially student make one mistake I don't know why they say quantity of current see charge is coulomb if you look at current what is coulomb ampere second that is current into time so if you just say current that means what you are not taking time into consideration so remember coulomb is coulomb is the quantity of charge coulomb is quantity of charge and that coulomb is ampere which is a quantity of unit of current not quantity unit of current into time time in seconds which means time so if you say in the definition that is proportional only quantity of current you are in trouble because you are forgetting the time factor so either you say it is quantity of charge or electricity then the statement is correct moment you write current that's what we teachers are waiting for to give you a zero mark in that definition. Now, we have derivation for what do you call Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Number of moles of Number of moles of substance deposited Number of moles of product form deposited whatever it is liberated evolved all this So this is equal to what number of moles of 
it is equal to number of moles of electron number of moles of electron passed into mole ratio into mole ratio so this is where the story starts so first let me explain what is mole ratio see mole ratio is equal to mole of substance upon mole of electron is this sir mole of electron mole of electron can sir are this is mole of electron passed this is mole of electron passed mole of electron see what we do is we take the reduction reaction suppose if i take the reaction zn plus 2 plus 2 electron forms zn so this is called as half reaction this is called as half reaction so this is ion this is electron and this is your substance so your m r the mole ratio in this case is mole of substance 1 mole of electron 2 suppose if i have um, aluminum plus 3 plus 3 electron forms aluminum so what do i have this is ion this is electron mole of electron and this is substance so here my mole ratio will be equal to what 1 by 3 if suppose i take this 2 oh minus forms h2o plus half o2 plus 2 electron so in this case what happens this is your ion and this is the substance evolved and this is mole of electron here both are on same side because now your mole ratio in this case mr mole ratio will be equal to what mole of substance half divided by 2 so that will be equal to what so your mole ratio is 1 by 4 so this is how we determine the what do you call mole of electron now step 2 so here we have solved one now we are going to solve the other one how do we get the moles of electron fast c 1 mole of electron one mole of electron which means 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 electrons have a charge of 96500 coulomb this is called as 1 faraday this is called as 1 faraday okay but how much is the moles of electron passed it is clear so moles of electron passed will be equal to what the coulomb is what coulomb is ampere second so some ampere that is i and time t is clear so you passed a certain amount of current i for a certain amount of time t so that is coulomb is this point so when you cross multiply so what do you get this comes here so mole of electron mole of electron passed will be i into t upon 96500 correct and this is anyway one one mole has this much charge whatever mole of electron you passed had this much charge i into t so this is we substitute now so when we substitute what do we get 
number of moles number of moles of product will be equal to what weight of the product upon m the molar mass n number of moles is n and that is equal to weight divided by molar mass and that is equal to i into t upon 96500 into mole ratio so now if i want the weight of the substance deposited so that becomes the final answer so now what do you i have weight of substance deposited will be equal to this molar mass came here will be mole ratio into molar mass into i into t upon 96500 so this becomes the final derivation of what do you call faraday's first law so understand this how did we start how did we start we started this, we said number of moles of product formed is a function of what? Number of moles of electron into mole ratio. Into mole ratio. So mole ratio, I taught you how, what is mole ratio? Write down the balanced reduction reaction, half reaction. Mole ratio is mole of substance upon mole of electron. Mole of substance into mole of electron. Is this point clear? And what is number of moles of electrons passed? That is I into T upon 96,500. So W, the weight of the substance becomes mole, mole ratio into molar mass into I into T upon 96,500. Got it? We need this for problems. It is clear, numericals. Then what we have is Faraday's second, we are going to stop at, we are going to stop at Faraday's second law of electrolysis because even though it's a little early, because the next is we are starting with electrochemical cell, that is Daniel cell. I require clear 45 minutes to discuss that. So next lecture maximum, that is what we will discuss. So we have Faraday's second law of electrolysis. Faraday's second law of electrolysis. So what does Faraday's second law of electrolysis say? It says that when the same amount of charge, when the same amount of charge is passed through when the same amount of charge is passed through two different solution when the same amount of charge is passed through two different solution the amount of substance deposited The amount of substance, the amount of substance deposited is proportional, is proportional to their chemical equivalent is proportional to their chemical equivalent. So what is chemical equivalent? E the chemical equivalent is e, it's given by the symbol E. So E is chemical equivalent E the chemical equivalent is mole ratio into molar mass. 
So, mole ratio into molar mass is equivalent. This is clear. So, see, suppose if I have two solutions, silver nitrate and copper sulphate, correct? For electrolysis of, for electrolysis of copper sulphate and let us say silver nitrate, copper sulphate and silver nitrate. Quantity of charge remaining the same. So, quantity of charge remaining the same what is going to happen weight of silver deposited upon weight of copper will be mole ratio of silver into molar mass of silver into I into T upon 96,500 divided by mole ratio of copper into molar mass of copper into I into T upon 96,500 isn't that equal to equivalent weight of silver upon equivalent weight of copper. I will give you an example. If you remember what was the definition that you studied of uh, equivalent weight in uh, 10 standards? That weight which combines with or displaces one part by weight of hydrogen, 35.5 parts by weight of chlorine and 8 parts by weight of oxygen. Nobody must have explained why it is 8 parts. We have the answer over here. See, molar mass of oxygen is 32. If I write the equation, OH minus forms half O2 plus H2O plus 2 electron. So, your mole ratio is mole of substance half into mole of electron that is 1 by 4. So, 32 into 1 by 4 is 8. That is how you get. O2 molar mass is 32, but the mole ratio is 1 by 4. So, you get 8 parts by weight of oxygen. I hope you have understood this.